As the host and creator of Attorney Audits Agitators, I see it as my duty to report on news involving sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and certain other agitator groups. Today, we are going to take a look at an article, well, an image from an article that I found a couple of months ago entitled, Violent Encounters with Sovereign Citizens. We're gonna take a look at all the violent encounters that have happened over uh, the last several years involving sovereign citizens and then I'm going to I'm going to cover a news article with you where a sovereign citizen was recently put in jail. So we're going to work up our anger by going through these violent encounters and then we're going to satisfy it by seeing a sovereign citizen put in jail. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the lawyer. This is Attorney Audits Agitators. Where we take a look at agitators of all stripes, sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I just got to 10,000 subscribers. You know what that means? I'm about to come out with some cool gear. Also, so I wrote the book on sovereign citizens. Check it out. The link is in the description below. $9.99 at Amazon. Uh, before we watch this, go through this. We're not watching. I'm just going to read and talk. Raise your cup, your glass in the air. Let's do the same time sip. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Oh, that was a good one. So this map sort of blew me away a little bit. Now it does go back into the 1990s for um, some violent sovereign citizen encounters. There's actually been a lot more. This is just some of them and the self-declared ones. So let's look up here in the top right corner. August 1997, New Hampshire, Carl, Carl Draga snapped after a traffic stop and killed two officers a judge and a newspaper editor. He wounded three other officers before killing himself. Holy heck, this dude went on a rampage. Brutal, sad, tra tragic, terrible. It shows you how dangerous these people are. This ideology gets into their head, man, and it, and it can snowball. Uh, June 1995, Southeastern Ohio, Michael Hill pulled a gun on, on an officer during a traffic stop and was killed. Look, this just shows how dangerous the job is for law enforcement. Thank you, law enforcement, and God bless you for being out there keeping us safe. Um, I, I Really, it, it's such a dangerous job. Oh, and that reminds me, if you like watching channels about cops, watch my buddy Chief Tuttle, the country cop. There's a link to his channel below. He's got great content on there about what it's like to be a cop in rural America. So th this, this one is actually pretty scary because this southeastern Ohio, that's probably a couple hours away from where I live. Um, all right, let's move over to the middle. Oh, I went out of order. I covered three, two, now we'll cover one. April 1995, Oklahoma City. Timothy McVeigh bombs a federal building. Terry Nichols, convicted of conspiracy in the Oklahoma City bombing, asserted sovereignty in three court cases. Now, here's the thing. Some people who get charged with crimes, they, then, they become sovereign citizens afterwards because it's like... It's a way, I think, for them to delay and uh, put up barriers through the legal system, but it also helps them divorce their identity from the legal system itself by claiming that the legal system is, is illegitimate. Whatever happens to them is also illegitimate and they don't have to actually address it. And that can help them keep, um, keep congruence in their mind. Uh, confirmation bias, cognitive dissonance, right? So... Uh, I wouldn't say that somebody who adopted it later on after they're convicted of a crime is a true sovereign, though they may be from that day forward. However, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, they were so anti-government, I believe it's probably okay to call them sovereign citizens. Um, all right, so let's jump to number four. September 1997, Idaho. Brothers Doug and Craig Broderick killed an officer and wounded another during a traffic stop for failing to signal. They were killed in a shootout. Tragic, sad. Number five. December 2003, Abbeville, South Carolina, the Bixby family killed two law enforcement officers during a 14-hour standoff over a land dispute. Uh, number six, May 2010, West Memphis, Arkansas. This one was very, very tragic. 
father and son sovereigns, Jerry and Joseph Kane, shot and killed two West Memphis Arkansas police officers during a routine traffic stop. Later that day, the Canes were killed in a shootout with police that wounded two other officers. This one is very famous. Um, the One of the officers who was killed, his father was also a police officer, and he now travels the country training and warning law enforcement about how dangerous sovereign citizens are. Number seven, Kirkland, Washington, September 2010. David Russell Mearland, angry over a traffic stop. What's with people freaking out over traffic stops? Threatened to use deadly force to arrest government officials he believed were felons. See, that's straight up, um, that's straight up sovereign citizen ideology, just believing the government is automatically felons. Very dangerous. Um, number eight. Oh, we got to sneak it around. It's oh, 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 there it is. Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. Militia leader Francis Cox and four from his group were arrested for plotting to kill or kidnap police officers, judges, and their families. They were caught with grenades and machine guns. I mean, this type of thing is basically terrorism. I mean, sovereign citizens are basically terrorists. Okay, number nine. Number nine. Martin jo Jonasson kidnapped and sexually abused his 21-year-old daughter. He took her to Indiana where she escaped and ran naked into a store. Terrible. Very, very terrible. Plano, Texas, 2012. Anson Chi was arrested for allegedly trying to blow up a natural gas pipeline. YouTube video surfaced of Chi ranting about the IRS and tearing up tax forms. See, this ideology, it radicalizes people. And then number 11, I cover this one in my book pretty extensively. There's a lot of articles on it. The trial uh, just recently wrapped up. August 16th, 2012, Laplace. Two deputies are killed and two others wounded during two separate ambushes. Seven suspects are arrested, including Terry Smith, his two sons, and Kyle Yokel. Those individuals were just put on trial and convicted. So when I say sovereign citizens are dangerous, here it is. Here's the map. They are dangerous. Man, it's a wild, wild world out there. Okay, let's take a look now at this article, Lancaster County woman sentenced to prison for filing $15 million in liens against the IRS as sovereign citizen. This is August 26, 2020. It's a fresh article. A Lancaster County woman has been sentenced to a year in prison and fined $25,000 for filing $15 million in false and fraudulent liens against an employee of the IRS. U.S. Attorney William M. McSwain said Tuesday, I'm, the federal authorities aren't messing around with sovereigns, man. Dorothy Ricard, 68. Boy, that's, that's a little old to be going to prison for a year. Of Kirkwood filed the liens after mailing the IRS letters that espoused sovereign citizen ideology, an anti-government movement that, among other things, that's for sure, among other things, denies the government's authority to impose taxes, according to McSwain in a news release. Riccardi's business, Summer Beam Woodworking, had owed about $24,000 in federal taxes, according to the release. The sovereign citizen movement is nonsense and will be treated as such, McSwain said in the release. And if you use it as an excuse to harass and retaliate against an IRS agent, you're going to jail. Then you'll have plenty of free time to think about the consequences of flouting the law. That's when they need to read my book. Maybe I'll send my book to the jails. <laughs> <laughs> Riccardi's attorney, Heather J. Matt, said the situation started when Summer Beam Woodworking was unable to pay taxes after the housing crash in 2008. Unfortunately, on this occasion, she was influenced by the sovereign citizen scam, where under the guise of education, they encourage ordinary citizens to challenge the authority of the IRS. She fell into that trap. Riccardi, Matt said, has taken responsibility for her conduct expressed remorse, wow, there's hope here, and pled guilty to trying to obstruct the IRS. She argued the behavior did not constitute harassment or intimidation. Well, it looks like a judge disagreed with you, ma'am. 
A year in jail for that is harsh. They don't mess around with these liens, especially $15 million. And notice that the IRS didn't come after her for the outstanding taxes. You can set up a payment plan for that. She tried to get out of the outstanding ta taxes with this nonsense sovereign citizen stuff. So listen, everybody out there, if you're into this stuff, get out of it. If you're thinking about getting into it, don't get into it. And if you're like me and you know it's BS, continue the journey forward. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. Buy my book on sovereign citizens. You can find it in the description below. Thank you everyone for getting me to 10,000. I got some apparel coming out soon. Peace.